Hello everyone, Eric Chappell, Civil Community Evangelist for Autodesk, and I want to welcome you all today for our webcast entitled Realistic Bridge Workflows. The star of the show today is Ara, and uh, he will be on in a few minutes, but I just wanted to uh, cover a few things before we turned it over to him. Um, if you're new to our webcast series, uh, welcome. Um, we do this on the first and third Wednesdays of the month, or at least try to hold true to that schedule. Um, sometimes we change it up a bit, and we're actually going to do that this month. I'll be sharing some details on that in just a bit, but we've got a really good, cool reason for that. Um, the goals of the webcast series is to keep you informed about uh, features and things that are happening with our civil products, and we want you to hear it in most cases from the perspective of the product team. Now, sometimes we have guest presenters from different parts of the company or even from partners or other companies that we work with, but for the most part we try to hear from our product team and today is is no exception. Uh, Ara is the is the man behind the bridge functionality at uh, as far as InfraWorks is concerned, so you're going to hear directly from him about some workflows that uh, that you can employ and get the most out of that product feature set. Um, so it's a chance for you to hear from the product team, it's a chance for you to ask questions and provide feedback, I'll give you some details on that in a bit, and just ultimately, overall, general goal is to bring you guys, the users of our software, a little bit closer to the folks who make it. Our next webcast, uh, as I mentioned, we're going to change up the schedule a little bit, is going to be on June 28th. Now that's three weeks from now, it's not the third Wednesday of the month as we typically do first and third. This is the last Wednesday of the month. Um, I can't say a whole lot about this, but know that there's going to be some stuff to talk about as far as what's new in InfraWorks. That'll be on June 28th. We'll hear from um, the product manager for InfraWorks, Sarah Cunningham, who you've heard from in the past, probably some other product team members as well, and you'll be seeing information on how to register for that webcast at at all of the locations shown uh, shown below on the list, the uh, community site, the forum, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, social media, as well as um, we like to email past attendees of, of past webcasts to let them know about upcoming ones. So if you're attending today, then you're going to get an email about this as well with some more details. We also want to get some ideas from you about upcoming webcast topics. So if you have any, any ideas, any things you'd like to see us cover as part of this series, please, um, please submit your ideas in the, uh, in the questions panel on your GoToWebinar interface. You can do that now or any time throughout the webcast if an idea pops into your head. Just you know, pre, uh, prefix it with idea for next webcast and, uh, and you know, we, we store and save and look over those notes. So we will uh, we'll pick up on that and consider it as a topic. So this is our way of allowing you to let us know what you'd like to see. I want to let you know about our community page. As of right now, it's, it's uh, URL points to it being an InfraWorks community page, but it really is a civil engineering community page. We have stuff on here about InfraWorks and Civil 3D and other products. Um, it's a central location for the forum, the idea station, um, where you can submit ideas on how you'd like to see Civil 3D or InfraWorks improved, infra tips or tips and tricks about the product. The gallery is just awesome. It's a place for uh, customers, users like you, to submit images and 3D models and virtual reality um, versions and all different ways of just sharing the work that you're proud of with, uh, with the user community. And we love looking at that. We love being proud of the work that our, our users, our customers are doing. And we love seeing the, um, the discussion back and forth of, you know, hey, how did you do that? Or how did you get this to look like that? Or how did you build that? And so there's a lot of good discussion that goes on in the gallery. You'll also find the social hub, which is a feed of, uh, you know, blog posts, Facebook, Twitter, etc. cetera, um, videos, including recordings of this webcast series. We've been doing this now for over two years, and we've got the whole library recorded and posted up on the community site. Uh, as well as information about upcoming webcasts and other videos as well. So definitely check out the, um, the community page, autodesk.com slash currently InfraWorks360 community. We need to update that URL to re reflect the new product name. Um, disclaimer, uh, we may talk about things that are preview features or even labs features today. 
we want to make sure that you understand that anything that falls under those categories, you should not make any purchasing decisions based on that, and that there's no guarantee that any of the features that are listed in those categories will actually be in the software and until you actually see them there. So um, just a little disclaimer there to cover anything that's kind of forward-looking that we may talk about today. Um, ask lots of questions. We've got uh, Elliot on the line. We've got Austin on the line, uh, who I think you are, are all familiar with from previous webcasts. Aro is going to be doing most of the talking, but uh, the, the, uh, Austin and Elliot will be in the background answering your text questions along the way. And, and if anything interesting pops up or if we have a break in the action or a little time at the end, we'll also um, repeat some of those questions over audio and have them answered that way. Um, so please ask lots of questions. The more questions, the more interesting and exciting the presentation is going to be. Unfortunately, we can't open the phone lines because of the size of our group but we will address those questions through the, uh, through the questions interface. So with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Ara, and he's going to take hey, you. Hey, thanks, through. Eric. You're welcome. Can you hear me? I can hear you, and the floor is now yours, along with the screen share. Great. And I'm just sharing my screen now. Just let me know if you see um, this thing, and I'll, I will start the presentation. Yep, I see, uh, I see an image of a bridge. Great. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm glad you can all join today. We're excited to walk you guys through um, one of our internal uh, case studies. We, we're developing many features, and we're constantly trying to address uh, the requirements of, of the bridge uh, process, starting from early bridge concepts and taking it all the way towards detailed design. While we develop these um, capabilities, we also um, test them out on, on different bridge types and different aspects of bridges. This is an internal case study of an interchange which has um, four bridges, and two of them are steel plate girder flyovers, and um, on the main roads, northbound and southbound, you have uh, precast concrete girder uh, bridges, and so we're we're choosing to walk through this, and the intent of the presentation is to uh, model uh, this interchange, the bridges on this interchange. Um, in the course of the next 45 minutes or so, we'll model um, main aspects of the bridge. We won't get to every detail, of course, but um, this process will also highlight some of the features that we've been adding to InfoWorks as of late. Um, in the 2018.0 release, we added a new way of allowing users to bring in their own parametric content. So you can extend the InfoWorks modeling solution with your own peers, your own foundations, your own abutments, your own girders. We made it very simple to uh, manage and bring in new content. So I'll touch on that as well. Um, today's presentation is kind of a a comprehensive start-to-end workflow, and uh, in future webcasts, I think we, we would like to focus in specifically on how do you create your own content, how do you model a peer in Inventor, and, and some of the um, major steps and bring it all the way in. Today, um, I will be focusing more on the overall approach. Um, ask questions in the, um, in the chat window, and um, we will uh, try to answer as we go. So quite a bit to show. Um, at the beginning here, I'm going to show a little video I took out of uh, Google Maps Street View to give us some context of what this what does this interchange, interchange look like? What do the bridges look like? Um, I should also mention that today I will be um, showing features that will be available this month in InfoWorks 2018.1. Uh, with regards to bridges. Um, everything you see today is, um, is going to be available in, in the next few weeks. Um, so let's start with the um, video that just walks through this Google Street View. So you can see here we have a steel plate girder flyover which is curved in plan. Uh, the first one which is closest to us has four piers and um, the girders are also variable depth over the uh, main 
span. If we uh, look at it closely, these are um, tapered hammerhead piers. So the pier caps are, are tapered as opposed to the more conventional uh, piers where you have um, individual pedestals for the bearings. And if you look uh, on the second flyover, you can see some of the variation that you need to handle. So this is an um, offset or cantilevered pier cap just because of the constraint of the uh, main road. And you can see a bit more clearly um, kind of the geometry of, of um, these girders, uh, these piers. Now, looking at it from um, below, you can see here uh, the flyover, and you can see the main bridges of the main north and southbound uh, road of this interchange. These are the precast um, concrete girder bridges. And um, the northbound, which is the further one, has uh, a wider roadway and um, the pier has five columns and the girder we have eight precast girders whereas the um, southbound one has uh, six pre-stress girders and the integral pier which has um, four pier columns so this kind of gives us a sense of what we're trying to model and you can also see that this configuration of bridge which is common along uh, these type of uh, uh, interchanges has a retaining wall um, a layout um, adjacent to the abutment. So these are um, kind of some of the salient features of this interchange. I may come back to the video as we progress through the InfoWorks, but let's switch over to InfoWorks now. Um, because of time constraints, I, I already provided a starting point here where I modeled enough of the roads so that we can uh, focus on the bridges. So you can see we have the first um, overpass um, or the flyover and the second one over there. Now, if you're not familiar with the InfoWorks um, par uh, component road option, this is a very very flexible approach to modeling roads and where each component of the road, whether, whether it's the shoulders or the lanes or the um, road decorations are all uh, parametric and we're and gradually adding a lot more information to the road, displaying a lot more information here. We can see the super elevation information. Uh, if we click on one of these um, slices, we can see here um, what the slopes are to, uh, to, to reflect the required super elevation for the speed of highway, et cetera. So uh, a lot of um, information is being displayed from the roads and, and um, stations and so on. Just trying to move this. Um, Okay, now I'm just going to go back into a different view here. So let's start by saying we want to add a bridge to the um, to the first flyover. So we want to add the bridge which um, goes from right to left here, and uh, we 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 can see in the Google Street View that this first flyover over has four. Uh, piers and the second flyover has five piers and then they have four steel plate girders and um, let's go and model that. So I'm going to the bridge tool here on the top, the purple one, and um, uh, you have two options. You have the precast girder bridges and um, the steel plate girder bridges. We're actually moving towards, we, uh, we made many enhancements to how you can model precast girders and really modify all the geometry of the girders. This is also going to be the way forward um, to handle much more complex or flexible uh, steel um, superstructures. So for today, I'm, I'm using a precast girder uh, layout, and I'm just basically selecting the location where I want the bridge to start. You can type in a specific station value or uh, just visually place it and drag this gizmo all the way across to um, to where you want the um, uh, length of bridge to stop. So you can 
you can then later on come back and make uh, changes, adjust it. You don't have to have all the information at hand to start the, your bridge modeling process. You can change the road alignment, you can change the vertical profile, you can change the exact stationing of the bridge. This is the intent. We want to bring parametric modeling to the forefront of the project. Look at early concepts and iterate over them. Now, this one, the default configuration has too many peers. We're going to go over here and change it to four peers. And when we talk about modeling in InfoWorks, we talk about modeling in context. What that means is that you see the constraints, whether it's the um, roadway geometry or um, uh, even point clouds you can bring in, as much context as possible. Here, we're going to go and make some adjustments to the peers. So if I zoom in, one of the things we're adding in the 2018.1 release, we're very excited to add the ability to automatically annotate the bridges. Here you can see that the overall length of the bridge is shown, and this is curved and planned, and it's 319 meters. And each of the span lengths are shown. This is contextual. When I click on a pier, I'll see you know, the distance of that pier from the start and end of the bridge and um, the length of the uh, adjacent spans as well. Now, um, let's go in here. And uh, of course, if I select the pier, there's additional contextual information. This is the height of the pier. Um, let's move this pier, just make the first span a bit shorter than 64 meters. And you can see while I'm moving this, all the geometry and the annotation updates. So if I, again, roughly uh, left the first span about 55 meters, um, we can come back and modify it. This second pier, we want to move off, of course, it's over uh, the main road. So we're just going to uh, move this over uh, just a bit. So again, I'm working in context trying to get a sense of span arrangements um, I, don't, I want to consider here. Let's make the end span a bit shorter as well. We want maybe the, the, the if we look at the street view image, you can see that this span over the southbound road is the variable depth one. And we'll make that one kind of the longest one of all um, in this configuration. Again, uh, come back and iterate over it uh, later on. Now, I'm going to select the girders. The default preset girders are not what we want here. And if I zoom in, you can see that when I select the uh, girder group, I can see the overall span length. This is the center line length. If I select an individual girder, I will see its length as well and uh, the lateral offset from the uh, center line. What I want to do here is switch it to four girders. So uh, we know we have, in fact, uh, four girders if we look at the um, street view of this model. And I also want these girders not to be corded, but I want these to be curved and planned. Now, so far, so good. Um, what I want to do next is say I, I don't want an astro type girder. In fact, relatively impractical to have a curved um, precast girder. So I'm going to go in here and I went ahead and created some new girders uh, and brought them in as parametric components. And I'm just going to type in steel here. You can see I added a couple of um, parametric girder types. And um, I'm just going to select the steel plate girder. Now, um, we are gradually introducing much more flexible modeling of girders. At the moment, when you uh, model a bridge as a concrete and you switch the girder types, then you you can also go in and specify it. In fact, it's a special steel. And you can also specify, um, you know, whether it's a wetted steel or some other uh, visuals. We'll, we'll just keep it as wetted steel, which is the um, example um, for this project. Now, uh, I can go in here and assign this to the other girders in the group selectively or en masse. I'm just going to go and quickly assign this configuration to uh, the rest of the girders in this group. And uh, now we can start seeing, um, well, um, the beginning of the geometry we want. You notice how the pier caps and so on um, adjusted to accommodate the differences in the girder geometry here between the spans. What I'm going to do next is select this girder group 
and assign it to all the other girder groups in this case. Now, we added um, recently, uh, a release or two ago, the ability to assign selectively. So when you have a more complex bridge where you might have um, approach spans with different superstructures than the main spans, the ability to refine one of these uh, spans, the girders in the span, and to then assign it selectively uh, makes a big difference. In this case, all the spans are steel uh, plate girders. I'm just going to assign it to all the, all the girder groups. Now, it's going to go through and update um, all the girders, and um, we'll see in a moment uh, what we have here. Now, if we go back to the... Um, to the um, street view image, you can see here that you had a variable uh, depth a girder, which is tapered. Sometimes it's parabolic, sometimes it could be just a simple linear taper. In this case, um, we'll do the same thing here. And this is utilizing some of the flexibility we added a few releases ago, where you can select any girder. And remember that you can add your own girder types with their own parameters. And uh, we'll look at that a bit further with the peer but when you zoom in on, on, uh, on this girder, you can see how you have these girder slices. These allow you to change any, any property at any location. Now, if I just select the girder um, the first time around, I'll, any change I make will affect all locations along this band. So here, I'm going to switch it to a three meter uh, depth for the, um, uh, for the um, main span of this bridge. And um, I can go in and quickly apply this to the other um, girders in this group as well. Which is, which is fine. Now, what's more interesting with the girder, the girder slice approach is we want to add a, a variation here, this transition between the 3-meter and the 2-meter girders. So I'm going to select this one, but this time around I'm actually going to select this end girder slice. Now it turns orange and any change that I make to the parameters of this slice, uh, in this case the steel plate girder, will affect this location and only this location. So I'm going to change it so it's three meters over the pier at this location. And I, I, I want to have a sort of constant three meter depth so it's not just a, a sharp change in depth, but I'm going to use this um, part of the mini toolbar and duplicate this slice information. I can specify specifically where I want it. I want it two meters or maybe three meters from the start. You can see that the uh, annotations that we add, were added in 2018.1 also work with all these girder slices. I'm also going to add this, uh, I'm going to make another slice here, and I'm going to add it maybe something like seven meters from the previous slice. So the distance between, the, the length of taper is over a seven meter length. And in this one here, I'm going to change, by default, because I said I want to add a new girder slice, it interpolated any dimension. In this case, only the depth of the web changed. Um, but in more complex girders, think of a multi-cell concrete box girder where you can have a lot of control on flaring out webs or flanges near supports and so on. Here I'm just going to uh, assign the two meter depth at this offset and all of a sudden I have uh, this kind of geometry. I could go in and play with um, flange sizes and so on. I won't get into that level of detail today. Uh, but for now I'm going to select this this um, and assign it to the rest of the girders in, in, its, um, in its own group. So they all have this uh, um, this tapered profile. Now, there's a bit more finesse behind the girder slices. You can have these slices to be absolute values, or you can have them to be relative, so sort of like percentages. If the girders all differ in length, you can have a bit more flexibility on the signing base. So now we can we can see here that um, we're, we're modeling um, exactly the type of girder variation that we want. I'm going to quickly do the same thing on this end uh, to mimic what we have in the real project. So I'm going to go through, assign a three meter depth here.
and uh, use this duplicate slice because this will preserve the dimensions I want uh, three meters from the end. And um, once again, add a new slice, which is seven meters from the previous one, and change its depth to two meters. And um, here we have kind of the superstructure variation um, that we intend, and I'll apply these two. Uh, the rest of the girders in this group. <clears throat> okay. Now, let's look at this pier. This is not what we have in the actual bridge. If we go back to the Google image, you can see we have this stepped hammerhead pier. And um, if you click on a pier, and for that matter, any component in InfoWorks, you don't have to um, search for files or what type of peers do I have. Contextually, you can see what's available for you. Now, you can add, you can add new content to this. I already went ahead and added a step peer, but instead of just jumping to it, I want to show how that, that would be done. So I'm going to go and open up the style palette so I can go into this orange tab and there's um, the style palette. The style palette is the uh, way Enforce manages most of the content, uh, whether it's um, static 3D models for row decorations um, or uh, textures. Um, we added a new tab in 2018.0 that went out a couple of months ago called parametric models. And this allows you to go in and bring in your own content. Now, you can create your own folders. For instance, I created this steel girder folder, and in the steel girders folder, I added this composite box girder geometry and the steel plate girder that we used. <clears throat> However, um, you can create your own folders, and the nice thing about this is you can add any content to these folders and share it with your colleagues. Now, I went in and just added uh, the step peer cap uh, at the root level of the parametric models, but you can organize it at will. So this is the model I created in Inventor to represent uh, the requirements of this bridge. And uh, if you want to author content, um, and you can author very sophisticated content um, using Inventor. This is the way you bring in this is the way you extend Inforks. This is the way you bring in your own peers, your own girders, your own foundations. And um, so if you have Inventor um, on your machine, you can, you can just load up the model. So it's, it's a really nice way of maybe as a starting point, if you want to author content, go into the Inforks folders, look at the content that there is and modify it and uh, bring it back in. So here you can see this is an Inventor model. Inventor is a very powerful solid modeling package. It can um, model um, the complexities that we have in the bridge components, whether it's simple peers or architectural peers and towers. You can certainly model them. We'll be introducing in the future uh, Inventor assemblies. Um, that will allow you to model much more complex geometries. Think of uh, foundations which have a mix of concrete pile caps and steel piles, but also think of maybe a pier where you're doing accelerated construction where the pier column is cast in place and the pier cap is uh, a pre-cast component with a cast in place infill. You can really start th thinking of much more complex scenarios. When we go into other bridge types, you can imagine, um, uh, let's say, a composite cable state bridge where the uh, superstructure component is an uh, assembly where the precast panels are part of it, the steel plate girder, edge girders, or boss girders are part of it, the floor beams are part of it, even the anchorage details of the stage are part of it. So assemblies will allow you to model and parametrically bring into InfoWorks more content. When I say parametric, what that means is that any dimension that you put in in, in, in the inventor model can be exposed out 
export it out when you save this. So I can go in here in any dimension, I can give it a, a name which is more representative um, and easier to understand, and I can set the parameter to key, and all these parameters will be exposed. If I look at other parameters, not every parameter has to be exposed to the user. Um, and the other point I should make is uh, most users will be consumers of content. We don't expect every consulting firm, every engineer and designer to become proficient solid modelers. But the, the point is uh, have someone on your team who, who becomes very familiar with this and you guys can add your own content to really meet the requirements of your geometries, of your bridge components. And uh, we also um, introduced the same approach to having parametric road decorations. I'll, I'll touch on that a bit later uh, in the presentation. So once you have this model, the solid model, link and flex it, you can test it in Inventor. When it works fine, you can export it from Inventor. And when you come into um, InfoWorks, you basically just go in and say plus and, and point to the folder where you have this Inventor part, and it just shows up. And you can take a bit more time and add descriptive tool tips and categorize the variables of this peer into categories that make sense to your colleagues, the variables that are pertaining to the cap, uh, could be in the cap folder and so on. And when you, when you click on this, uh, when you bring it in, when you click on the peer, it will just become available in the same manner as any other con content that we offered out of the box when we ship the um, InfoWorks. So here you can see I have the step peer cap. And um, you can see on the right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this uh, palette here for screen space. You can see that all the dimensions, all the variables that control this peer cap, uh, we categorize them into columns and caps and, and uh, made them a bit more readable. You want to make it as understandable as possible to your colleagues. Um, now, this peer cap, uh, I can control the uh, direction of super elevation. Um, in fact, I'm going to go the other way. And so some of it is visual um, refinement. So you have this parametric uh, peer, and I'm also going to adjust um, the vertical a bit. I'm not going to I'm not going to have an integral peer. I want bearings on this one, and um, I want to uh, just raise it a bit. Um, so you have this um, vertical offset, uh, small adjustments you can make. So it's it's a good idea to bring, build in some flexibility in parametric models. So when you're modeling the bridge, you have a lot of flexibility uh, in here. So you know, we'll, we can accept this as um, a good starting point for this peer, and um, it has a kind of geometry. You can control any other aspect. For instance, we don't want rounded uh, peer, uh, peer cap ends, so let's toggle that off um, to reflect what we really have on the actual bridge. So again, this, this content has this flexibility. It's a chamfered square-ended um, variation now of this uh, peer. I'm going to go ahead and apply this to all the peers in this, in this bridge. They so, so happen to have the same geometry. Now, um, these foundations are not really suitable, a bit too large. I'm going to go in here and switch it to a simpler um, rectangular. Now this, this content has different uh, options. Here I can say that the pile cap should be relative to the number of piles, and there is a spacing ratio of piles to its di diameter. I'm going to say I want two piles, two by, the two by three grid, and um, I want the pile diameter maybe to be 800 millimeters, and um, I can keep maybe the length. Uh, the way it is, and apply this. I'm going to switch over to um, a different mode in visualization called engineering view, so I can see a bit more transparency, a bit less um, um, uh, obstruction in the model here. So if I look underneath, well, maybe we'll accept this as uh, a reasonable foundation to start. Now, you can, of course, apply this to all, all the other uh, foundations, and you can individually go in and select um, any one of the foundations and make variations. You, you won't necessarily have the same pile length um, on every foundation. You might click on this one and say, well, this one, the soils are particularly bad, and based on my geotechnical um, 
uh, computations and engineering, I'm going to make this a bit longer. I'm going to make this 25 meters long. So it's not because you can quickly assign and create the model that everything has to uh, retain all those variables. So now, um, pretty good start. We have um, this bridge here with um, the piers that we want laid out um, uh, similar to the uh, street here image. Now, I can go in and do the same thing on this other flyover. I'm going to make use of this capability we added recently a few releases ago where I can save a configuration of a bridge. I'm going to save this. I, I'm going to call it uh, steel flyover. And you'll see in a moment um, uh, why um, this is useful. So let's let's go into the bookmarks here and um, go into this view here. What I want to do next is model a the second flyover. This one has five um, piers instead of four, and um, it also has four steel plate girders. But if you look at the street view image of that one. Um, You can see that the um, two of the main spans are um, deeper and then it transitions out. So there's a few differences in there. Um, on a more subtle basis, you can see that the step pier caps actually have rounded pier caps as opposed to squared off and so on. Um, but um, the bulk of the bridge is almost the same as this one. So in a large project, in a large P3 pursuit, you might have dozens of interchanges. Um, and each interchange might have a half a dozen bridges, and um, and you want to have uh, the most economical solution, but you also want to have some uh, degree of um, standardization. So you'll often have uh, a number of bridge types which uh, will be uh, repeated in pattern, even though all the individual dimensions may vary. So let's quickly go in here and um, add a bridge um, on this one here. So I'm going to start roughly around here and dr drag it out to something like this. Again, later on in the project, you'll, you'll likely come back and as the road geometry is finalized, um, just update the road model and the bridge will, will follow and will update. Now this one had five piers instead of um, four as the first flyover and the default bridge here that I have um, has 10 of them. I'm going to switch it to 5. And um, I can go through the same exercise of, of moving all the peers, looking at the constraints um, of this project. Uh, so, for instance, this one obviously is not properly located. I'll, I'll move it out here. and. Um, This one I'll move out, something like that. It's very useful to have the annotations, the dimensions show up as I, as I zoom out to this one. If I move it, I can see quickly what the uh, left and right spans are. I'm just going to make these a bit more balanced uh, in length, 77 and 75. Good enough for today's purpose. And um, now I could go through and... Uh, and model all the girders and all the piers and foundations or modify them exactly like we did in the first uh, bridge. But what, instead of what I'm going to say is, regardless of the number of piers and girders, I want a certain pattern of bridge, a style of bridge to be used. The one thing I do have to do is indicate how many girders I do have um, because the uh, bridge template will be able to accommodate if you have a wider road with the same style with more girders or fewer girders, it will still work. So I'll just quickly... Um, assign this to um, all the um, all the girder groups. But from there on, rather than uh, um, going in and massaging this bridge, uh, I'm going to have a much better starting point. I'm going to go, um, and now it's updating the whole bridge. Now I'm going to select the bridge as a whole and go into the bridge uh, hyperlink here. And here you can see I have a catalog of bridges. And somewhere in here, um, we should see 
the steel fly over to this one here. So I'm just going to double click and assign this um, to um, this bridge. Now you'll see right away a uh, number of changes. It's going to be steel plate girders, curved when plan. Um, there's, a, there's a few adjustments I'll, I'll have to make um, because the number of PRs has changed. I notice that this band here, I'm going to go in here and, and delete these intermediate slices. This should be um, constant uh, depth, um, one of the two main spans. So I'm, all, I'm doing the same thing on this one here. And, um, and I'm going to go in, in into the um, girder slice at this location here and change it to three meters. Again, in the real world scenario, I might spend more time on looking at um, variations of steel top and bottom flanges and, um, and uh, refine the model. I'll quickly assign this to um, uh, the other girders in this group. And um, the other thing that um, when we looked at the street view model of this bridge, um, I'm going to a certain view. One of the piers on the far left um, had um, it was encroaching on the road, sort of like this is, and we 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 used an offset um, cantilevered variation of this. This this parametric inventor model actually exposes enough flexibility so I can say, well, the left width of the pier cap is three and the right width is seven, for instance. And I want the pier cap to be offset to the left by two meters as I do the column to be offset. Um, the super elevation, remember the first bridge had um, the curve in the other direction. I do have to make an adjustment to the super elevation. I'll just switch it over to the other uh, side, but you can you can see here that create your own parametric content, make it really flexible. You can reuse it uh, on all sorts of uh, scenarios, and um, I could go in and and do a few other modifications. But in, in the course of um, twenty five minutes or so, we created a starting point now of two flyovers. I want to create a Revit model, the Inforce model. I can get quantities from this and so on, which is great. We can do some an initial analysis on pre-stress concrete girders today. Uh, we are working on next to allow you to carry out superstructure assessments, analysis, and code checks of steel plate girder and composite box girders. So line girder analysis is the first, followed by grillage and fire element modeling. If you have work in assessment analysis and design of steel plate girder and composite box girders, creating a fine element model and carry, calibrating it and carrying out all the required analysis and code checks is very time consuming. We're going to make it directly tied to the modeling process. Huge gains of product are becoming. But for now, what I want to do is beyond visuals, beyond the layout, I want to create a Revit model. And why do I want to create a Revit model? It's because I want to do construction drawings, plans and elevations. I may want to place rebar and so on. So Creating a model like this, of this type of flyover in Revit directly, would not be a simple task. The geometry is complex, super elevated, curved and plan, vertical profile, variable girder depth. We introduced a few releases ago the ability to just send the model to Revit. It takes a few minutes, two, three minutes, maybe five, depending on the length of the bridge. Um, what it does is dynamically creates a Revit model. It creates uh, for every peer foundation uh, Revit components. And um, once the Revit model is created, you can then, with your larger team of technicians and, and, and BIM uh, modeling uh, personnel, really start doing the plans and elevations, really start adding rebar. So I won't have time today to show you some of the incredible capabilities that Revit uh, the next release of Revit will have this summer, which is freeform rebar. The ability to place rebar on, say, a curved deck and it recognizing it. Um, the ability to place rebar on very complex architectural piers and towers and abutments. The ability to do uh, create drawings and annotate all the dimensions, irrespective of the uh, 
complexity of the geometry. These are things that are coming, and we will aim to have a future um, Revit uh, Infoworks slash Revit webcast to show in greater detail how these uh, very important uh, civil structure refinements in Revit will be available soon. So here, um, I parametrically created this Infoworks model, and then I created this Revit model. So if I it, it open this Revit model up, I can see here, and I'll just go into a shade of view, for instance, you can see this first flyover was created in Revit, and again, uh, you can then carry out a lot more detailing on this bridge, whether it's drawing plans and elevations for early uh, bid submittal or um, rebar schedules and, and the like for detailed design. So really exciting that you can go from uh, any bridge. It doesn't matter if it's a simple bridge or a very complex bridge. You, you can create the better model just as easily. Now, I'm going to go through here and um, look quickly look at some of these. Oh, no, before I do that, I wanted to go onto this onto this bridge here and highlight. In the past, you could have parametric road decorations, barriers, or railings, and so on. We added uh, static decorations. We added parametric decorations. So these are uh, much more flexible uh, models that you can create an inventor. And this Austin on our team created these slightly more architectural um, uh, details for the um, parapet, including um, some uh, some indentation and relief. Uh, but by parametric, that means that you can click on it and see a whole bunch of parameters. It could be a complex gantry. It could be a more complex barrier or any um, decoration that you want. In this case, I want to make it maybe a bit taller, 1.2 meters. And it's not stretching the model. It's just changing the geometry of that specific, uh, not the bottom, um, say the top height. I want to make it a bit taller. So you have great control if you adopt, create your own parametric real decorations in addition to um, parametric bridge components, you can really start modeling very complicated uh, scenarios. Now, one of the other advantages of using parametric decorations is that when you create the Revit model, these will be able to support dimensioning and rebar uh, that static decorations cannot. Now let's go into, I only have a few minutes, but I want to um, add um, one of the um, main road bridges. So this is a precast concrete uh, girder bridge. So I'm going to select this road here and go into the bridge tool and place a bridge starting roughly around here and um, it's about 100 meters in length. By default, it looks at the road geometry. In this case, the road has a 2% uh, left to right uh, slope across all the, all the lanes and the shoulders. Um, it has six precast girders if you have a close look. The starting point's already pretty close. I'm going to take this pier and move it out to somewhere here. And maybe this middle pier between the lower roadways, I'll kind of center that a bit. Now, um, let's have a look at this pier a bit more closely. When you look at the um, in Street View model, you can see here you have kind of a four or five column variation depending on which of the bridges and its integral is around the pier cap and, and so on. That's, that's Try to model the same thing here. Just a default enhanced peer object that um, this part of Enforce actually allows you to handle that. So I'm going into this view, and I'm going to say that it has a vertical offset because it's integral. And I'm going to make the peer cap overall uh, deeper uh, because of this um, integral uh, nature. I'm also going to make the taper ends um, the same depth. And um, sorry, the length I'll make it. I, I basically want very little length of taper uh, and the full depth. And um, let's have a look at 
um, what this peer cap with the rounded ends in the integral scenario will look like. So that's kind of um, what we have. We recall we have four columns here. And the columns, I know ahead of time, they're a bit uh, narrower, something like 2.7 meters and 1.2 meters in depth. And um, this is kind of um, what we, we have in mind. Let's assign this. I could spend more time. I, could, I think the peer cap's a bit too wide. I can could, I could modify that. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to apply it to the other peer. And I can go in and modify um, the foundations of this um, peer as well. I'm going to look at the, um, the abutment here. I'm going to select this abutment. And <clears throat> I mentioned earlier in, uh, inventor assemblies. With assemblies, this is, um, I created a, an assembly where you have an abutment and a typical retaining wall that we saw in that street view image. So this is a more complex combination. In the, in the future, Enforce will most likely have direct retaining wall modeling, but near abutments, um, we want to have common configurations available. So I'm just going to make a couple of changes to the abutment. Now, this model, this inventor model, this parametric model of this abutment with typical retaining wall, um, you can start seeing them if we compare to the um, street view model. You can see here on the left, somewhere, yeah, this is kind of the um, retaining wall that we're talking about, very common kind of layout um, that we have. So it's parametric. I didn't take, to, take the time to categorize all the dimensions of, all the variables I just put in a bucket, some of the retaining wall dimensions, you could change the length of the taper and, um, you know, railing details and so on. Um, but imagine that this is um, a good starting point. Now, I should mention that we want Enforce to be able to recognize the geometry of the retaining wall and wing walls and account for that in the uh, grading. So this is uh, some future work that we have. It's not just a nominal uh, parametric model that has to interact with the rest of uh, the grading model. This is um, will allow you to investigate bridges. Do you have more fill in retaining walls with less bridge or a longer bridge with uh, shorter retaining walls or fill? These are all important in the product matrix. Let's quickly assign this to the other abutment. And um, in the same way, I could I could create the uh, Revit model from this. I just right click on it and create a Revit model. Instead of doing that, we already saw that we're running out of time here. I'm going to go in here and um, let's switch back to conceptual view. I want to show you how this whole interchange could be brought into Civil 3D. So I'm in Infoworks. I might start in Infoworks and take a Civil 3D to do some of the Civil drawings um, or refine a few things. So I can go into the Infoworks um, toolbox here on the very end and say export to IMX. I'm going to I could I could open the entire Infoworks model in Civil 3D or I could go in and select a subset. This is a pretty large model, so I'm just selecting a subset which is uh, closer to our interchange here, and I'll call it um, WW1 for the webcast, and I'm just going to save it. Now, I can then easily go in to um, Infoworks, uh, into Civil 3D, and open this up, and um, it takes a moment here. Once the um, export IMX is done, so it's taking all the terrain information, all the uh, road geometry information, all the bridge component information, the piers and foundations, and so on. I actually, while it's doing it, I already did something very similar while well, it's completed now. I'm in, into Civil 3D here. I'm going to go into the Insert tab, select uh, from the folder where I saved this. Uh, and I'm going to assign the same coordinate system as we have in InfoWorks, and that's it. Now, it's going to create the Civil 3D model from my interchange, including the alignment information of the uh, roads and all the geometry of the bridges. So you can see here um, what we have. Um, we model those three bridges, and you can see some of the information. So that's kind of um, 
how you bring in this information into um, into civil 3D. So in this 45 minutes or so, we looked at a realistic uh, bridge and that it's based on um, an actual interchange. And we modeled many of the salient aspects of superstructure and used custom components um, that you can create yourself, extend the solution, use the bridge template approach to quickly leverage. And in this case, it's just two of them, but imagine a large project. This steel flyover might occur over and over again in different um, uh, alternatives. The same thing with the precast girder bridge. And then we looked at sending this to Revit. And in the future webcast, we'll look at uh, some of the really strong enhancements to Revit to do the detailing of these bridges. The other really important aspect for us is today, it's very easy to create the Revit model from InfoWorks, which is great, saves you a lot of time. You can focus in on the bridge concepts and layouts. Um, but what we really need to do is um, the ability to update the Revit model. So if you come back to InfoWorks and change move appear or change the vertical profile, today you have to create a new Revit model. In the future, this is what we're working on, you can always come back, make any changes you want, and we update your Revit model and preserve all your work, your rebar, your drawings, and so on. The Revit model becomes fully dynamic. This is the best of both worlds. You can start in InfoWorks, and when you're relatively confident that this is the concept they want to take towards detailed design, start, start in Revit. Start your process. And uh, any adjustments in the late stages of the design process can be accommodated. So that, that is it, Eric, for today's um, workflow of a realistic bridge. I hope you guys all and ladies all found it useful. Um, and we look forward to uh, future webcasts. That was great, Ara. Um, I know we've had Elliot and Austin kind of in the background answering questions. Do you, either of you guys have any that uh, might be worth airing out here uh, over the audio? So this is, this is Elliot here. Um, I think Austin and myself managed to field most of the questions. Uh, I personally don't have one I, that I would call out to Era, but Austin, if you thought there was one that deserved another minute. Um, well, I was just answering one now, and I, I think that it might be a good one to say. So uh, Ben asked, uh, is Revit going to be used for plan work? Is that the goal? And why not build the functionality into Civil 3D? Um, and so I, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by plan work, but... Um, Right. So we see InfoWorks as being the modeling and uh, design platform. Engineers and designers work in there in context, uh, launch analysis, look at quantities, and so on. When you want to create civil drawings, the civil alignment, the profiles, you want to open it up in Civil 3D. While the bridge components also show up in Civil 3D, um, the bar for the structural side is higher and better than Revit. So um, Revit already has a lot of capabilities to create construction sheets. And um, in particular, uh, when you look at placing a very complex rebar, um, it's an enormous amount of work that's gone into Revit. All the rebar bending schedules, all the all the uh, display of the rebar, we don't show every rebar on a drawing sheet. We show it according to um, conventions in, in Canada, it might be different than in Germany, et cetera, you might show uh, annotations that is 3, 20, uh, uh, 30 M's at 300 millimeters. You don't show every one of them. So a lot of finesse in countrifying all the rebar. The other thing that's coming, I didn't touch on it today, in the future when you place a steel plate girder like we did today, in addition to all this steel girder geometry, your starting point in InfoWorks will have parametrically cross frames, transfer stiffness, field, field splices, all the other detail. And when you open that in Revit, all of these will have full steel detailing uh, information. So this is uh, an ongoing effort, significant effort to uh, improve Revit to bring in some of the advanced steel capabilities. And Revit will be able to have not only very rich, very detailed rebar, uh, information, but also uh, very rich steel models. So from a structural point of view, the drawings in Revit are really um, where we want to go. We want to make it very simple to create the Revit model. To create any one of those bridges I did today would be 
many days of work in Rabbit. You're doing it almost in real time. We want to leverage all these capabilities and allow you to make all this parametric changes in force and have Sybil CD and Rabbit <clears throat> um, just update uh, so that they reflect all these changes. So this is this is the the requirements or the capabilities that Revit has are really quite sophisticated to model and document uh, the structural aspects of the bridge, and that, that's why we we want to go there. There's other um, aspects. Revit is going to be the is the portal today for IFC export IFC bridges coming along, uh, and um, you'll be able to take out very rich bridge models into other solutions, other systems. There is all sorts of efforts that go in Revit to take the BIM model to field, take the rebars to automation, rebar bending machines, uh, take the steel to CNC machines. A lot of activity going on in the BIM to field uh, arena. And um, so we're trying to leverage the best of all worlds here. All right, great. Well, thanks, Austin. Thanks, Ara. And also thanks, Elliot. Um, again, I mentioned that Austin and Elliot have been in the background answering tons and tons of questions. So thanks also to all of you who asked, asked those questions. Um, before I let you all go, I just want to remind you that our next webcast will be coming up on June 28th. That's three weeks from now. And Sarah will be telling us about what's new in InfraWorks at that time. Thanks, everyone, for giving us an hour of your day, and uh, we hope to see you again at the we next webcast, and thanks again to Ara for delivering a fantastic presentation. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.